Good morning and welcome to our parking lot live stream worship here at First Congregational United Church of Christ in Rapid City, South Dakota. What a wonderful thing it is to look out and see our parking lot full once again and see everyone respecting each other and, and the distances that we need to keep in order to stay safe. But it is good, good to be together and thank you so much for coming and joining our worship today. For those of you who are watching on live stream, you can get our bulletin at our website, that's www.rcfirstucc.com. Our worship service begins as we always do, and so those of you in the parking lot, I hope you can shout it out. We have come together to experience God's presence at this time in this place. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Good morning, I'm Jeff Van Karen, and I'm going to be your lay reader this morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Hear, O people of God, and declare that the Lord is our God. Our Lord is indeed God, the one who is creator of heaven and earth and all that dwell in it. We gather in response and gratitude to God's invitation and love for us. We come to worship the God who created us and all of humanity, like Adam and Eve, in God's image and in God's likeness. So let us now worship our great God. To the God of love and justice and peace, we lift up our hearts and minds in worship. For even in the midst of injustice and oppression, this is still the day that the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Please join me in the invocation. Gracious and just God, as we gather today in solidarity and witness with all Christians who seek to protect, welcome, restore hope in this country and this world, manifest your presence afresh in this place. Breathe on us so that we may both hear and heed what the Spirit is saying to us at a time of sight. Grant us the courage and the strength to bravely and boldly live and do what we have been charged and challenged to do. We offer this prayer with hope 
expectancy, thanksgiving through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins before God and one another. None of us are perfect, gracious God. We have made mistakes, and sometimes our mistakes have caused others pain. We have spoken words in haste, and their harshness has been unkind. We have left tasks undone, and our contributions have been missed. Forgive us, and help us to forgive one another. The Gospels report that Jesus never got angry at those who sinned. He became angry with those who thought they did not sin. Our God is gracious and forgives our sin. We believe the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. We send our greetings to all in the name of Christ. Please join me with the response. It's Psalm 116, verses 1 through 2 and 12 through 19. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant. The child of your serving girl, you have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, 
In your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. The reading from the Gospel this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas, Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no house of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You receive without payment, give without payment. My brothers and sisters, here ends this reading from our gospel. May God bless this to our lives. Amen. I have a couple of assistants who are going to help me, help us with the, forming the faith this morning. Um, Elsa and Cohen, would you like to come up? And if other kids would like to come near to the stage, um, this would be the time. have here a very small chalkboard, too small for everyone to see. So Elsa and Cohen, um, you're going to have to help us by talking about what you're doing too. So we're going to start out um, and have you introduce yourselves. So Cohen Grauman, I want you to tell us how old you are. I am six. And Elsa Grauman, how old are you? Eight. So Cohen, will will you always be six? Will you be six next year? No. Okay. Um, so we better get the eraser. Because that isn't permanent. You're not always going to be six, are you? And Elsa, will you be eight at Christmas time? No. Okay. What grade are you in, Colin? I am going to be in, I'm going to be in first grade. Okay. I will be in third grade. Are you always going to be in first grade, Colin? No. Not forever? Only for one year. Only for one year. Um, 
Well, the endangered one, yes, sir. Yes. All right, well, um, Ted Huffman, what's his job here? He holds the chalkboard. <laughs> he holds the chalkboard. Is he always going to hold the chalkboard? No. What's his job? Pastor Ted. Is that right, Lily? Pastor Ted? Mm hmm. Chalkboard holder and the pastor. Is he always going to be the pastor forever? No. 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 What about what's my job? What do I do here? Maybe a pastor also. Okay. A pastor also, right? What else do I do? Yeah, I was thinking Minister of Education, right? What I do, family nights, we do all those fun stuff. Yeah. What did you say? I help people, that's right. Am I always going to help people? I hope so. But I'm not always going to be your pastor, I'm not always going to be here to be your teacher. Yeah. yeah, that's what happens to us too. We're retiring, we're not always going to be here. But look, what remains? Can we erase that? No, we can't erase it. Love. So the pastor, that's not always going to be pastor. I'm not always going to be minister of education. You guys are going to grow up and be bigger. Be in a new grade of school. We'll have different weather than we do today. Things change. But what always remains is the love, right? And that's what we give thanks for today. All right, uh, let's have a prayer. Oh God, we give you great thanks for your love which endures, which your love, for your love which binds us together through all times and places. Bless us, bless the love we share, and help us to continue to love one another as you have loved us. In Christ we pray, amen.
This is a lesson from the book of Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre, and as he sat by the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day, he looked up and he saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them, and he bowed down to the ground. He said, my Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves, and after you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham hastened to the tent to Sarah and said, make ready quickly three measures of choice flour and knead it and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf tender and good, and he gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them and stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, where is your wife, Sarah? And he said, there in the tent. The one said, I will surely return to you in due season and your wife, Sarah, will have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the same time, I will return to you in due season and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. And he said to her, Oh yes, you did laugh. The Lord dealt with Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had promised. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to his son whom Sarah bore him. 
and Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Now Sarah said, God has brought laughter to me. Everyone who hears will laugh with me. And she said, who would ever have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. Well, friends, as wonderful as this gathering is, it isn't exactly what we'd imagined for this day. We were thinking more along the lines of one of the Department of Hospitality's wonderful potluck lunches. And maybe a stirring rendition of Vitor's Toccata on the organ with Michael at the keyboard. Passing the piece with hugs. Cruising the tables carrying a baby. Reading to the children in the story corner. Singing with the choir one more time. Willie and the children singing silly songs. Crashing the old guy's table in the corner of the fellowship hall. Checking on that nursery worker. Money counters in the office. The building alive with conversation and people who enjoy being together in our beautiful building. Now, we're not saying that this isn't great. And we're not saying that we don't appreciate all of the work and thoughtfulness that have gone into planning this day. It's just that it's different than we expected. It isn't the first time things haven't worked out exactly as we have expected. We've been surprised before. It seems that God always has just one more surprise. That's the way it was for Sarah in today's lesson. After all, she was 90, as the Bible says, beyond the time for children. Her husband was 100, not exactly the young man she once knew. They had no permanent home. They were living in tents, following some kind of vague promise of God to show them a new home. That seemed to be much more elusive than they had imagined. Sarah thought by this time they'd have found their promised land, for sure. Things weren't exactly working out as they expected. It was enough to make her laugh. If she had laughed, she probably would have ended up crying. Just imagine if God asked you to stay up in the middle of the night tending a newborn baby every night for the next year or so. And then there's that matter of diapers. They didn't exactly have a portable washing machine out there with their tents in the desert. The whole idea was absurd. Who knows what Abraham was thinking? The old goat often got caught up in his own ego. He couldn't stop talking about having another son. He was sure God's promise included loads of progeny. Sarah couldn't get him to even talk about retirement and him being a hundred years old and all. So Sarah, Sarah laughed. And so here we are. June of 2020 has come already. And we are in the midst of a coronavirus pandemic. So we're in the parking lot when we have this big, beautiful building made for hundreds to gather and worship. A kitchen big enough to feed us all. We've got classrooms and restrooms and a parlor and a library and a cookie cabinet and offices and a choir loft and an elevator. And don't forget, nearly new and nearly unused air conditioning systems for our fellowship hall and sanctuary. If you look at it from some perspectives, it really is enough to make you laugh. It isn't at all what we expected. God's always got just one more surprise. Once again, we discover we're not the ones in charge. And there is even more to the story. Not only does Sarah have a son in the, at the age of 90, she lives to see him grow into adulthood. If the numbers we get from the Bible refer to the way we count things now, she saw his 37th birthday. Even after she laughed, there is a lot more to the story. And that is critical to our gathering today. As laughable as our circumstances are, it's good to remember, this is nowhere near the end of the story. John Robinson, in his celebrated sermon to the Pilgrim Fathers, said, For I am very confident the Lord hath more truth and light yet to break forth from his holy word. His words ring true to our situation today. God isn't finished with us. This may be the day of our goodbyes as pastors of this congregation. This may be the week we move out of the offices we've occupied for the last quarter of a century. 
maybe, maybe it will be. <laughs> and it may be the last time we see some of the children of the church before they're grown up, or at least more grown up. This may be the last time we gather with you as you worship together. But I'm very confident the Lord has more truth and light yet to break forth from the Holy Word. God isn't done with us yet. God isn't done with this congregation. There is no shortage of tasks that remain before this church as it embraces a new future. There is no short of min shortage of ministry yet to be done. So, we wish you Godspeed. May God carry this congregation with all the speed to embrace new leadership, new ideas, new possibilities, new mission, and new ministry. God be with you till we meet again. Amen and amen. One of the treats of the past week is that I had the opportunity to meet, um, virtually meet, through a, through a computer program with our Department of Stewardship and Budget and take a look at the financial reports um, for, for the month of May. And in the month of May, our pledges exceeded the amount that we had budgeted. Our bottom line was a net positive cash flow in this organization. Despite all of the stresses that have been put on us by this particular pandemic and by not being able to meet face to face, the generosity of this congregation is absolutely amazing and overwhelming, and we are so grateful. So my message today to you is a message of gratitude. Thank you so much. For those of you who would like to participate in giving, you can do so on our website. That's www.rcfirstucc.com. There's a giving tab. There you'll have the opportunity to support not only the general fund of the congregation, but also our special offering for the season of Pentecost, which is the Strength in the Church offering, 
which helps new church initiatives and new church starts throughout the United Church of Christ. So I hope that you will all participate and that you will feel God's presence with you as you give and as you offer your lives and your gifts. Let us pray together. Gracious God, how amazing is your creation and how amazing are your people. Their generosity overwhelms us. Help us to participate in that generosity as well, as we offer our lives and our talents and our thoughts and our time and our gifts to you. Bless them, that they may become blessings to others. Amen. Our church family is constantly changing. People come and go. Babies are born and children grow up. People commit themselves to one another. Loved ones and friends among us come to the end of their lives. Individuals move into our community and church life. Others leave us moving away to new places, new experiences, and new opportunities. It is important and right that we recognize these times of passage, of endings and beginnings. Today we share the time of farewell with Ted and Susan Huffman, who are leaving. On May 14, 1995, this local church called Reverend Ted Huffman to serve as senior minister. On September 10, 1995, this local church called Reverend Susan Huffman to serve as Minister of Education. We thank First Congregational United Church of Christ, its members and friends, for the love and kindness and support shown us these last 25 years. We ask for forgiveness for the mistakes we have made. We are grateful for the ways our leadership has been accepted. As we leave, we carry with us all that we have learned here. We receive your thankfulness, offer forgiveness, and accept that you now leave to minister elsewhere. We express our gratitude for your time among us. We ask your forgiveness for our mistakes. Your influence on our faith and faithfulness will not be left. We forgive you and accept your gratitude, trusting that our time together and our parting are pleasing to God. Do you, the members and friends of First Congregational United Church of Christ, release Ted and Susan Huffman from the duties of senior minister and minister of education? We do. Do you offer your encouragement for their ministry as it unfolds in new ways? We do, with the help of God. Do you, Ted and Susan, release this local church from turning to you and depending on you? We do, with the help of God. Do you offer your encouragement for the continued ministry here and on the relationship with another who will come to serve? We do, with the help of God. On behalf of the Black Hills Association of the South Dakota Conference and the United Church of Christ, I witness to the words spoken, words of thankfulness, forgiveness, and release. The member churches of our association and conference hold each of you in prayer. The association and conference pledge their support in the transitions signified in this service. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh God, we give thanks for remembered times when we together have shared the life of faith. We thank you for the moments we have shared with Ted and Susan Huffman in worship, in learning, in service. We pray that they will be aware of your spirit's guidance as they move to a new place and a new phase in their lives. In the name of Jesus, the Savior, amen. God, God whose who everlasting love for all is trustworthy, help each of us to trust the future which rests in your care. The time we work together in your name saw our laughter and tears, our hopes and disappointments, 
Guide us as we hold these cherished memories, but move in new directions until that time to come when we are completely one with you and with each other. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. As we sing our last hymn together, for those of you who are able, please stand. Go now surrounded by our love and led by the promises of God, the presence of Jesus Christ, the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Amen.